Hey, this is your boy Tech. Feeling a little anxious? Got a little bit of fear? Episode 43 starts now. Is that awesome. new gear, Tech? Again? More new gear? <laughs> huh? <laughs> Sorry, what is that? <laughs> Can you scoot back a little bit from your camera? Bro, every episode you're wearing a new piece of gear. Okay. Okay. Tech coming in so fresh. Well, you know, I left my... my I got no clothes, so I got to make it. Yeah, that's yeah, right. yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> you got to put on my fresh hat over here for you. <laughs> fresh. <laughs> nice, Tech. Thanks. Hey, I'm going to play this little clip that... um that uh jake jake shared here in a minute and and we're actually going to talk a little bit about this uh in the podcast um in this episode folks let's give it a listen let me see, give me a thumbs up if you guys can hear this and i put it off on everybody else it wasn't until i said you know what for me to fix this i gotta read what the hell what the f is wrong with david goggins not not blame anybody read my book it's okay i'm afraid of my shadow how can i overcome that go in the military get your ass kicked do things you hate to do. Be uncomfortable every day of your life. Roger that. I'm not the smartest kid in the world. Okay. Instead of somebody saying, oh no, you're smart. No, no, don't say that to yourself. I said to myself, no, I'm a dumb. Okay, roger that. How you get smarter? Educate yourself. So the things that we run from, we run from the truth. We're running from the truth, man. So the only way I became successful was going towards the truth. As painful and as brutal as it is, it changed me. It it allowed me to become, in my own right, who I am today. That was a little snippet from David Goggins. He was on a show talking about um, improvement, self improvement, and stuff. And today, in today's is episode forty three. We want to talk about um, something that's uh, kind of a big issue um, in today's world. I'm just gonna read a couple um, interesting facts here about our topic today. It's uh, one uh, interesting fact number one, according to the World Health Organization, an estimated 264 million people worldwide have an anxiety disorder. Fact number two, anxiety disorders are the most common mental health disorders in the United States, affecting around 40 million adults or 18.1% of the population every year. And here's the number three fact, about our topic today, women are more likely than men to experience anxiety disorders. And according to the Anxiety and Depression Association of America, women are twice as likely as men to have an anxiety disorder in their lifetime. So in this episode, we want to talk a little bit about fear and anxiety and how we can overcome those uh, challenges in our life. Um, being that we are called the encourager show we want to focus on our niche uh, and that is being encouraging um, encouraging in all aspects of life and today we want to talk tackle that topic of fear and anxiety it's something that i still struggle with and i have a problem with anxiety um i think we all do in some form yeah man it's uh how do we get anxiety where did that come from I think it comes from like uh step stepping out of your comfort zone. That's when well that's for me that's when anxiety builds up is when I step out of my comfort zone. Like uh you know I've been working with a uh, coach a lot mm -hmm. and <clears throat> recently he has me warming up the old lineman. And I've I've never done anything like uh trained any like uh old lineman. But you know just for me to get out there, but just knowing that he's right there, just in case I need him, you know, mm -hmm. but for me to step out of my comfort zone and train these kids, warm these up before we get into training, you know, my anxiety, my hands start sweating. I start, my heart starts pounding. <laughs> I start getting all these anxiety, but you know, I just, I just do it. When was the last time you played football too, Tech? When was the, probably in high school, right? Yeah, I think it was high school. And you, you, I pro you probably didn't even play lineman because you were skinny and strong and fast back then. No, I wasn't lineman. I played lineman like Pop Warner, but mm -hmm. 
because you know so yeah naturally being, going into the being asked to coach uh, you know in his pro in your guys's program yeah normally typically you're the f- photo and video person right yep for alpha the or- your guys's organization yep usually i just do video and um photography for alpha but one day we were short short-handed and he asked me to warm these kids up mm-hmm. he told me he just gave me he just outlined uh, some things to do and then showed me how to do it and then i did it i think i did it for like three weeks three Dang. weeks now so each week it gets better and better but that first week man my anxiety fear everything was kicking in I bet, man. I've been in those situations too. Um, but yeah, that's a great example of overcoming fear and anxiety. Jake, what do you have to impart or compart? What do I mean? That's share. What do you have to share about that? So, first of all, we should normalize fear and anxiety, right? Because it's not talked about a lot because it's uncomfortable. We're in an uncomfortable situation, but everybody feels this and it's just it's not addressed often enough why i think this is an important a topic to address is if we normalize this then fear can become an asset it can be about it can become a positive thing for you to know what you need to improve on to think about it from let's look at i love looking at things from a biological perspective like why things are happening it, it helps me make sense and once i can make sense of something then i can kind of see a path forward or sideways or whatever way i need to go and so let's talk about like originally let's go back 400 years right if you're in africa what what importance does fear give you if you're here in the united states what importance does fear give you so let's say for example you're in your home right and you have your family and kids in there and a bear comes into you or you know, into your like let's say you're in there mayor because a bear comes into your home what place does fear have in helping you survive if you're in africa a lion comes in your home right so so what happens in these situations is cortisol gets released right which is a steroid so those things that tech is talking about where your heart slows down and, or, or excuse me speeds up and you start to sweat you literally have a steroid running through your body. And so your brain is trying to figure out in the scenario for, for, for men, usually it's fight or flight, right? That's kind of our, so, so, you know, tech's body doesn't know the difference between in this scenario, between a bear and teaching a new scenario from a chemical experience, right? So it's the chemical experience that throws us off there. It's the same signals coming through, <laughs> uh, which is why it's hard for us to overcome those, right? It's un- un- unknown scenarios like that. Um, so and, and it's interesting because it affects men and women a little differently um, when, when we talk about the biological happenings of what's going on. So you have epinephrine and cortisol getting released, right? On both sides, both men and women, women get a release of oxytocin, a very strong release of oxytocin to help them calm and manage the stress. Men get a tiny bit. So for whatever reason uh, that you want to take in this, I think probably from a biological standpoint, let's say that bear or lion is there, we do, we got a tiny bit of calming to allow us to focus our brain probably and then attack back or whatever we're going to do, defend in that scenario. Um, but men are given far less oxytocin. I think it's for that biological reason, right? We need to take action. Um, us pausing and relaxing in a in, in an emergency fearful scenario probably wasn't very beneficial if we were in war or if we were facing a wild animal and we needed to protect our family, right? So that kind of like makes sense to me if you can kind of connect the dots. I don't know if that's making any sense for you guys too over there. Yeah, it's been a while since I've been attacked by a bear or a lion, so... <laughs> But I know I understand what he's talking about. Yeah, but your ancestors, right? Your ancestors <laughs> yeah. were right, and maybe not, maybe not on the island, but something along some sort of pre, you know predator, probably for, for um, uh, what 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 was what would you say for for Polynesians? What was the most ferocious predator that you would face? Man, probably As sharks, a, sharks, or something okay. like that in the ocean, right? Or yeah. Or probably not knowing where to go because they had to navigate through some, you know, vast oceans, man. So, right. 
something like, like this. That, that one uh, little clip that you guys shared earlier this week, the short, slow but surely, slow but sure boat. Oh yeah, the the uh, boxers, the crew of seventeen people that were stranded yeah. on the uh, the um, uh, what is it a uh, the reef a, a reef yeah Minerva Reef yeah Dwight Dwight guy guy bow the slow ship. but sure slow but sure you know that that was probably their biggest fear was being stranded on that 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 reef for what three months. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you you're not getting the proper um, proper food, proper you know water. And you're stranded out in the middle of the ocean on a reef. Yeah, I couldn't imagine that. But yeah, it's some um, this anxiety and fear is something that it affects. Like, or let me. There's another. I I like the statistics. I like these little little facts. Um, I, and I don't know how they gather all these facts or. They didn't even know they had an organization that were dedicated to anxiety, but social anxiety disorders affects about 15 million adults in the United States. And it usually develops in childhood or early adolescence. That's, that's wild, man. So it's, it's actually, it's, it's a huge thing. It's a huge problem that we ever, everyone faces. Um, well, not everybody, but 15 million adults in the United States currently face that. And hopefully we can shed some light and some topics on how to overcome those anxieties, how, how we can overcome it through, you know, um, uh, there's a lot of different ways to overcome it. But um, one of the specific ways is getting help, seeking um, some type of help, um, professional help, many different ways. What are, what are some ways that you guys have heard of people handling their different anxiety? Well, men and women do, um, they've done quite a bit of studies on this. Um, Tony Robbins talks about this pretty extensively too. Uh, but, but women tend, you know, you, you, you were, you know, speaking about a study that women are found to be more prone to stress. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, the ways that they deal with it are typically different than men and the way that they like to deal with stress in general, right. There's always going to be outliers, outliers, right. So if you're, a woman and you don't find it that way that's totally fine or if you're a man uh that you know has stress a, a different way than also but i'm just using generalities here but women tend to like to talk about it they like to talk through um with with the group with a social setting right so they like to talk to you know to revisit their anxiety and overcome it by by being able to think it through and then talk it through And men tend to engage in more like active problem focused coping. They'll go golfing, they'll go to the gym, physical activity. They don't always need to, or tend to have to talk it through. Um, now that's, you know, that's from this particular study. Um, we've talked about this before. I think there's a time and place for men to be able to talk. I think every man should have a, a network, a group of other men that, you know, if he needs to talk something through, he needs that core group of, uh, of friends to be able to rely on, to run ideas off. Um, if he's stressed, whatever that the, the time and place for that is not typically with, I would say not, I wouldn't recommend that your first option is to go to your wife and kids. I would say you should have a strong group of men that you can bounce those type of ideas off and then bring back your leadership and strength back to the family. Um, that would be, you know, my my recommendation that every man has has a network like that for himself. Um, if he doesn't have that, I recommend you find that um, or engage in those activities like we were talking about. But we, it, it from from the studies they've shown that men tend to get relief from their stress by action based activities, um, being you know doing something physical, probably going boxing, jujitsu, all those types of things. Uh, we tend to overcome our stress that way. And that, that I think that also gives us as as a man that gives us time to like sort it out. Sort out what's going on and like figure out a plan of how to execute that, whatever putting us into stress. Typically speaking, what is uh anxiety? What does that mean to us? What does that mean to our society? What is an anxiety and fear? How would you guys define that?
Well, they're, they're normal evolutionary responses to stimuli, right? We just have different scenarios now, which incur them. Typically, if we get put in scenarios, I like I always like re- revisiting the past because we carry that DNA in our veins, right? But, you know, in, in today's age, it's like with like Tech was saying, being put in a scenario that you've never done before, being being put into a, a leadership role that you haven't actually gone through the... Um, you know, it's, you've, it's, there's a first time for everything, right? So I'll give you an example too, you know, for my main job, I give PowerPoints to hundreds of people, right? And in my prior job, I did not give PowerPoints to people over video conferencing. And so that was just a new experience for me, for me to give a PowerPoint, talk it through, you know, have 30 minutes of, of talking time through slides. Um, you know, I remember the first time going through it, um, feeling kind of the same things that, that tech was talking about there. Right. So that feeling of, of being uncomfortable, um, literally you're having cortisol released in your body. Right. So those symptoms, you might feel uncomfortable. You might not be able to talk. Your mouth might be dry. Um, all of these are <laughs> symptoms of, of, of anxiety in, in the moment. Now there can be more long-term anxiety notice if that is more what you're referring to as well. And there can be long-term fears, but, and those um, definitely have to be addressed because that is not a state. If you are constantly in a state of stress, which is cortisol in your body, your immune system is suppressed. You are susceptible to be sick. You're susceptible to, for those things. So those are two separate things, short-term fear and anxiety. Those are okay, right? Because it's telling you that you need to change something or become more experienced in something and, or prepare more, uh, right? Those are all good things. Long term, that's another thing we should talk about. There is that if you're experiencing those long term, then some things, some some drastic things, need to change in your life. Right on, right on. I'm just going to read a little sum here. Anxiety disorders are a group of mental health conditions in which anxiety is the primary symptom and can significantly impact a person's quality of life if left untreated. So, like. Like you were saying, the cortisol, if you have a bunch of that just just constantly going, you ain't, you're going to be debilitated and won't be able to function. Um, but yeah, there's several types of anxiety disorders, including um, generalized anxiety disorder, panic disorder, social anxiety disorder, and um, just specific phobias um, and other such things. But man, it's a... I, I, it, it's a, it's an actual, it's a real thing, man. And, um, a lot of people, um, they let these things can, uh, like debilitate them from moving forward and trying to progress. They know what they need to do, but it's hard for them to move forward because of these anxieties. And it's kind of like, uh, what the way I look at what, how I define it is anxiety is just trying to anxiety is like, you're trying to control the future for me. Like you're not knowing what's going to happen not knowing the outcome. That's how I think of my, when I have anxiety, when I have anxiety, that's why I, I, I get all worked up because I can't control what's about to come. So I have situations like that. So I'm, I'm trying to um, be mindful. They say, if you become, uh, if you improve, like, uh, what is it? Study mindfulness. Have you guys ever heard of that? Mindfulness. It's like one of the ways you can help treat your anxiety. And a buddy of mine once shared that with me is um, I didn't even know what mindfulness was. But he shared is like when you're washing the dishes, you want to be all about washing the dishes, like being present. You feel the soap um, in your hands and you feel the water rushing over your hands, the warm water. And you're, you know, scrubbing the plate with the sponge or whatever it is and cleaning it and being mindful and being present and being able to practice mindfulness can for me personally has helped me reduce my anxiety fears especially when i have to go to a new assignment or going to a new shoot and i don't know what's going to happen it helps me to be present when i'm focusing on the road driving down the road seeing like pedestrians walking safely and noticing the street lights and listening to the traffic uh, the sounds of the traffic it helps me be present when i'm mindful when i'm driving to a certain um job so i've been able to practice that to help reduce my anxiety but it's still something i hell i need to work on and i thought it'd be a good topic to share 
with our listeners because it's a real thing. Anxieties, anxieties happen. There's all different sorts of anxieties. And um, we hope to encourage you to be able to, you know, so first of all, let you know that you're not alone out there. It affects over 15 million people just here in the United States. So if you're struggling with anxiety and you um, haven't found an outlet or, or something, hopefully this podcast can shed light on that for you. And one of the things that's helped me is practicing mindfulness, being present, being grounded in this in wherever your environment is. So just a little two cents for me. But also we want to talk about fear too. Fear and anxiety kind of almost in, goes hand in hand with each other. Fear. Fear is another debilitating thing that I don't know how it ends up going with anxiety, but those two things usually go together. <laughs> right. So um, I just read in, in preparation for this, I was reading the, so Tony Robbins has a, it, an article about this and he has 10 steps on how to overcome fear. Right. And the first thing is to recognize that it's normal. It's evolutionary, right? That everybody feels this. So going back to like we were saying before, normalize fear and anxiety. This is something that everyone goes through. It's okay, right? Um, so let me read through the 10 steps and I'll pause like between each one. If you guys have anything you want to add, if not, then we'll just go through the list. Uh, but let me start with number one on how to overcome fear from Tony Robbins here. He says, number one, identify your fears. Yeah, I think that's a good step. Identify what's scaring you. Is it scaring or, or fear? Same type of, is it the same words that mean the same thing? Fear and scared, being scared? Yeah, yeah. before before you can do anything, you got to know what the problem is. So you got to identify it. Right. I like number two a lot. It says recognize that fear can work to your, to your advantage. So read that one again. Recognize that fear can work to your advantage. So you're flipping the script on fear. I like that because I feel powerful when I know that fear can help me instead of leave me paralyzed or um, or, or afraid, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a that's a challenging one, right? But you, I guess one person would have to figure out how they would, I mean, assess that situation to be able to turn it around. Some people give man, you know, there's different types of fears, but I would imagine you'd have to be on top of your feet. Yeah, and how do you figure out that to make fear work in your favor? Well, it's exposing a weakness you have, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, for example, Tech, let, let, let's not to pick on you, but um, so uh, how we, you felt uncomfortable when you were leading the O-line, right? Yeah. So, so how you recognizing that, how can that work to your advantage? Like the more times you do it repetition-wise, right? You, you, you're getting more confident each time through. Are you preparing differently from one time to the other that coaches had you do it? Yeah. Have you learned different things that now you're not worried about that you were worried about before? Yep. I do a lot more research and stuff like that. I call coach almost every day, talk to him about things I need to do. Uh, what can I do better? Talk to him about like uh, different kind of techniques. Why, why we do it? I've, I try to ask him why. why. Why does this work? Why why do they need to be in this certain position? Why does this, what, what, what position do they need to be in, you know? Because there's certain positions that will give them the power to strike. And I just ask him why. And then once I figure out the why, then I can pretty much figure it out. And then you're not, you don't feel the same way going about yeah. it the next time, right? Yeah. So here's the thing. This is because now this I is can explain you're... to the kids. Because now I can explain to the kids why they're doing what we're training them to do. Because before my first time there, we were doing the the warm ups. I didn't know what why we were doing what we were doing. But as time went on, I understood the why, and then now I can explain to them as they're doing the drill. This is what we're doing. This is why we're doing it. That moved you to do some action. Yeah. 
So I guess that's right, so that's what fear did me for me is how I flipped the script was it made me put into action of finding out what I could do better to get rid of the fear. Yeah, you're a better old line coach now, right? Yeah, just a so, little bit better. <laughs> right. So so it would initially wasn't your strength is now a strength for you, which is like, you know, or, or becoming in the path of getting stronger, right? So you're improving on something. So literally a fear has made you better at something in life. Yeah, exactly. Right. Flip the script on that. So, um, so, so I think that's, yeah, so that's, you know, that, and that's awesome. We can become better at this everybody right all of us right. if you're afraid that the bell should ding like let's go back to what jocko says right well you're suffering you could use the same concept here i'm afraid good <laughs> right good okay why i'm a, i'm about to improve here if i use this the right way if i use these feelings the right way now and, and again when we go back i need to go identify what's making me afraid now, okay, what can I do to prepare to not feel this way again? How can I prove that? Or is it just repetition that I need to go through, right? Because we don't like sitting in that feeling. You know, I'm with you. I don't like sitting in that feeling, which is why it's like, that's the time to improve, to not feel that same way, right? So we can use, you know, we can literally use it as as uh, jet fuel to propel us into away from this, you know, this feeling of fear or, or or slowing us down. We can propel us to be better at what we're doing. So I like that. Um, next step is sit with your fear. How long do you sit with the fear? Yeah. <laughs> Right. It's, I think this is this is the elite way of dealing with fear. What I'm just talking about it, where that I think we jumped to it when it was like, I'm afraid, and then go to the Jocko mindset. Good. I think this is sitting with your fear right there. Is recognizing what it is, like it is, um, what it's doing to us, and then what needs to change. That's kind of sitting with the fear is having the light bulb moment that. Okay, this is going to end up being good for me. Nice. All right, number four, create goals that are musts, like must dos. This kind of goes to what you were talking about just here in a, in a second ago. Um, notice. So let, let's unpack that, right? Um, using the tech example, still, you. What, what what motivated you from from sitting with that from recognizing it is that you went back to coach and asked the whys right so essentially the goal that you got out of it was let me just go learn more about this situation so that i know what to do in this situation and so i don't feel what i'm feeling in that situation and so next time i'm prepared so it's like really creating a plan to maneuver around uh, what fear was initially making us feel yeah and like the first time he asked me to do it, he, he, you know, he gave me some, uh, some outlines and, and the whole time I was just going through my head, like creating a role play in my head, what we're doing to help me, you know, get over that. Right. And that probably made it easier than it could have, than it would have been without that. Yeah. So I was just role playing in my head. We're going to do this after that. We're going to do this. Then do this, and then, and then uh, once we started, I, I wasn't as afraid, but I was still afraid. <laughs> if that makes sense. What was that number four again, Jake? That was number four. Sit with your fear. Is that what it was? That, uh, sit where your fear was three. Three. Create goals. You know, which is really this. This is your space. Notice because you're the one pushing. The rest of us, a coach too, right? Um, pushing us to have goals, um, create goals that are um, that are must. So fear inspires us for change, and then that ins inspiration for change moves towards us finding goals to not feel the same way anymore. That's kind of what I'm getting out of it. Nice. Um, that's a great one. Number four, I like that making goals. Yeah. Um, number five. I like this one a lot because this is kind of my space. Um, recognize the excuses, the white lies that we give to ourselves. Why we didn't do something, why we avoided it, 
<laughs> why we did this, why we did that. Recognize the excuses that don't inspire you to change. Yeah, I've got a lot of those excuses but not recognizing them <laughs> I'm, I'm guilty i'm guilty because the little white lie to like when tech when you do your early morning workouts right and that alarm goes off in the morning like how many times is that voice just saying hey go back to bed yeah. sleep five minutes longer <laughs> yeah every every morning oh, yeah that one don't, doesn't shut up right <laughs> yeah it's <laughs> yeah so, so that's number so recognize yeah right. number five recognize the excuses recognize the excuses all right yep and at that one i the reason i like that is because i know i have to work on it because i hear excuses and have to face them down so much and i i think the reason i hear so much is it's actually a focus of mine right but it's like i i don't want to lie to myself and there is that voice of like self preservation in your head that wants you to avoid anything that's hard, right? Anything that's that, that that's hard. There's a voice in your head that wants everything to be easy. And and so I've really been going after number five for me. All right, number six. And I love this one because this caters to really everything that we represent as a group and that we encourage everybody else to represent. Surround yourself with success. Uh, the quote that Tony Robbins gives with this one is proximity is power. Hmm. I like that. Proximity yeah, I like is that. power. I was listening to uh, some podcast uh, during the weekend. Um, I forget who it was, but one thing that stuck out to me is they were saying that your net worth equals your network. So if you surround your whatever you surround yourself people, whatever people you surround yourself with, that's your pretty much you're going to be your net worth. So if you surround yourself with successful people, you eventually be successful. Yeah, if I had the reggae horn right there, I would have pressed it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the one right there. If, if, if um, that that that's super super important and something we talk about constantly in our in our you know in our group in the encouragers um we all hold each other accountable and um we're pushing each other to be great on a daily basis so i love that about us and if you don't have a group i would look for a group that has that if you think about that proximity is a uh, power if you think about the way the old the the trojan you know the how they used to battle back in the day not even uh during the Roman times, but also during Civil War time. You remember how close they, or at least from the movies that we've seen, how close they all stand next to each other? Now imagine if they were all just spread apart. <laughs> if they weren't standing so close to you, you think they would all like charge at the same time or they, or would they retaliate or I mean, like retreat? I think that proximity and power would go a long ways in just a battle type scenario. And I guess... Like um handling our fears too it, it can have power too when you're with someone that's suffering you're suffering with someone you're going through the same fear with someone or knowing someone that had gone before you that has um gone that way or, or overcome that fear and you know that they've been through it you know there's power in that too that proximity of knowing that someone's already been to, been there before you i like that proximity is power that was number six number six yep all right, so number seven, adopt a growth mindset. Okay, yeah. We understand that. That that's that's dope. So that ties back to fear has a purpose that can be a positive purpose if we use it that way. Right? So rather than fear throwing off your game completely. Again, recognizing that fear can work it to your advantage. It ties to, to step number two there. It, it, you know, is it, it, you know, it allows you to grow when you recognize that fear can inspire that change for you to become more. That's seven. Right. Yeah, it's number seven. Number eight, find valuable insight in pain. 
Mm. Find valuable insight and pain. Yeah, that's deep, huh? Yeah, that's that's deep. Suffering, right? Or going through the pain. So when you yeah, when you say that, notice when you say suffering, when you say go through the pain, what comes into your mind? Well, staying along the terms or along the lines of football with uh, tech, um, going through summer camps, <laughs> going through the those uh, two a day camps. I don't know if they have two a day camps anymore, but I remember uh, and just thinking about going through those camps. That's that's pain you have to go through, and um, I just remember. Uh, Navy SEAL talking about that when we had gone to Alabama. And Nick Saban has a during. I don't know if he still does this, but he usually has a uh, a guest speaker come and talk to his his uh, his team during the week of their summer camps. And there was a I forget his name. There was a Navy SEAL that came in and was talking about suffering and pain. And he said the reason why a lot of these you know. Uh, Navy SEAL trains so hard and why you guys, why we have football camps and two days and all that is because to create a brotherhood, it, he says, like, if you suffer together with someone and go through pain with someone and it creates a strong bond, a strong relationship. So that's what I was thinking about along the football lines is that if you suffer with someone, you can find strength in, in your pain, create a bond or a brotherhood when you're, going through that same pain. It's more like empathy, right? Yeah, absolutely. Empathy. Well, the bond you would have from your brothers. Yeah. I mean, you're going to have, you're going to love them stronger than, you know, there's nothing like pain that, 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 that bonds friendships and um, relationships stronger than just about anything I've ever experienced. Also suffering around a bowl of kava. I was thinking that in my head right there. Notice why, why do you think why do you think we're our friendships are so strong? For one, we're suffering. <laughs> we're voluntarily suffering. And two, we're the the on top of that, some of the heart to heart messages and conversations that we can have um in the wee hours of the morning you know, suffering together, uh, again, that bond, that friendship, sharing knowledge that nobody else knows, the brotherhood, all that stuff together. That's what makes those those bonds the strongest. My strongest friends to this day are, are people I've mixed with over the years. It's, that's, that's not a coincidence. Yeah, absolutely. And also... Inflicting pain on each other by one another bowl or another round. Order. <laughs> Order. Yep. So that was number eight, Jake. Yeah. So that I um I posted in the chat. Actually, I oh. should have done that from the get go, so you guys can see them now. But yes, that that's number eight. And I like for for me. Okay, I don't like surprises. But now, if you tell me, it's it's like having a cheat code. If you tell me pain, there's insight there ahead of time before the pain comes it's that it, it it changes everything for me it's like having it's like hacking it it's like having the cheat code to life if you if you tell me hey jake like pain's gonna come you're gonna suffer but it's gonna be good for you <laughs> like that that is, i i like that it helps me it helps me keep that positive mindset when i you know when i hear that so um to, to me, that's like the cheat code to life right there is just knowing that's how you're going to be happy. That's how you're going to progress. Um, let's go to number nine. Can you take number nine notice? Because this is another one of your specialties. I don't know if it's a specialty of mine. I just pretend a lot. Uh, number nine, visualize your goals. Yep, I like that. Visualize your goals. That's a huge, huge one. This, and, and just to remind you guys, we're talking about um, ways how to overcome fear. 
and we're just listing the 10 goals that um was it tony robbins yeah 10 ways to overcome fear that tony robbins says this is his step-by-step process so number nine is visualize your goals to help you overcome your fear that's what's up that's tight talk about that unpack that one a little bit notice why that's important to you to put yourself in an intentional state of visualizing your goals. Well, not to get too deep, but when you visualize your goals, um, it helps you to, I mean, so you, we all know that we're beings of light, right? We're beings of light that we emit energy We're we're light. And when you help to, when you visualize something, it helps to bring it to reality. Your subconscious doesn't know the difference between right or wrong. It just believes everything is, is true subconsciously. So when you're sitting there, you're visualizing and you're actively visualizing your goals. I can see how that can help overcome your fear because it helps you vibrate at a higher energy. And when you're high, vibrating at a higher energy level, you'll be able to attract that same frequency, that same, you'll be able to get out of the funk. You have to get out of the, the frequency of fear and be able to manifest into a higher frequency, higher energy to be able to um, manifest your goals and overcome that fear. I mean, not to talk about frequencies and <laughs> light and stuff, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's how I interpret that. it. That's how I interpret that's, it when I hear that. Yeah, that's elevated the elevated terminology. If we if we bring it down to um, just normal, right? Do you want to dig yourself a hole or do you want to climb the mountain? And your mentality and how you visualize is everything. Visualize it is everything. So you have a negative mindset. If you don't visualize where you want to go, you're digging yourself a hole. Uh, if you have a positive mindset, you know, mindset, you're elevating your line of thinking. You are cruising towards the top of the mountain. I think that's like if we just said it in layman terms there. That's the way to look at it right there. That's the same thing. Notice was that, that was much more um, eloquent how you put it. Sometimes I have to dumb it down for me. But <laughs> um, sorry, man. I've been that, that, reading all that other. <laughs> no, it sounded all awesome. Other stuff <laughs> sounded awesome. All right, number ten. Peck, you want to take that last one? Yeah, number ten. Accept that you'll fail. That's an interesting one. To be overcoming fear, you you accept that you'll fail. How does that transition into overcoming fear? I'm trying to think about that. We had a conversation about this in the chat the other day. How it's important to fail. I used fail upward. I think coach used fail forward. Maybe it was you tech. Um, we were just talking about that's part of the process, right? So failure is a step towards success. If you give up, again, just knowing that failure is part of the recipe for success, you have to fail to get to success. So knowing that it's one of the steps, it's easier, but you still, you got to pick yourself up and keep going. That's the key, right? You have to go there, but just knowing that's part of the recipe. If you're hooking up success, right? That's one of the ingredients you have to use is failure. Hmm. I see. Maybe along those lines, I think it'll help you. Yeah. It'll help you to keep moving forward too. If you know that you, it's okay to fail, except that you're going to fail at some point. So I see. Oh, okay. It's okay. It's okay. You're gonna you're gonna fail. It's all right. It's not the end of the world if you right. do fail. But when you fail, you want to fail forward. You want to fail up. All right. Let's use text example. Right. What if you had gone in and gave wrong information? The worst that could have happened is coach steps in and corrects it. Now you all learn and you're good to go for the next one. Right. Yeah. So while not ideal, you'll survive it. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Right, and which has happened a couple times, <laughs> right. especially for the right. first week or two. You know, there's a right. couple of things that I said that I that wasn't really 
something that we weren't supposed to teach, but you know, coach stepped in and he didn't make it seem like I made a mistake. He just kind of like made it like he was adding on to like what I was saying. So it didn't make me look feel bad, but it you know, but at, at least when he said it, I I recognized that I wasn't supposed to do that. And that that allows so we can talk about this, right? You could fail. That's a way to fail forward, right? Is used it as experience, notch on the belt, go forward. There'd be another way if you never coached again after that. That would be failing downward, right? Yeah, <laughs> that'd be true <laughs> failure. Is not well, using it for experience well, if, to be better. Yeah. Well, if I quit, I think I would have fell down instead of fell yeah. forward. If I would have said, "Forget right. this, coach. I don't want to do this no more." <laughs> I just want to go back to my camera. <laughs> and I would have fell down. Instead of telling them to put their left foot forward and you tell them to put their right foot forward or something. Yeah, do a hokey pokey. Yeah, that's what I would have had them do. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's some great tips. Go, can you go from one to ten again? How to overcome ways to overcome fear, Jake? Yeah, yeah, let, yeah, let's, yeah. So we'll just recap it again. Just knowing that fear is biological, it happens to everybody. Anxiety is also built in. It, it's meant to help us improve or to help but keep us alive, right? And the fear is to, to motivate us to move from the situation we're in. The anxiety or stress that we feel is letting us know that we need to change something, right? And so the recommendations to overcome this identify your fears is number one number two recognize that fear can work to your advantage number three sit with your fear number four create goals that are must must do's Recog number five recognize the excuses number six surround yourself with success proximity is power number seven adopt a growth mindset number eight find valuable insight in pain Number nine, visualize your goals. And number 10, accept that you'll fail. Those are solid tips right there, man, for overcoming fear. And then, you know, just to recap for like, if you're in, if you're having anxiety, you're going through anxiety. Um, for me, I like to practice mindfulness. If, I, if I'm going to be facing something that makes me anxious, practicing mindfulness. That's one of the ways that... Um, can help overcome your anxiety. You guys have ever heard of Emma Stone? You guys remember that actress? Yeah, I just read recently that she had a huge um, a thing about her that she was like, she would have panic attacks for doing interviews and doing all the press stuff that she'd have for after releasing movie. Like, you know how they go on press tours and give interviews to everyone? Like there's, I was reading that she would have panic attacks and um, one of the ways that she... Um, and anxiety, huge anxiety um, attacks. One of the ways that she would um, uh, battle that, overcome it, was practicing mindfulness. And she actually sought out professional help. So, so also seeking out professional help is another, it's not a taboo thing to do. It's a, it's actually, it's helpful and it's safe. And seeking out help for your anxiety and fear and practicing mindfulness is a one, was a, a huge way for me to overcome anxiety. So hopefully some of these tips can, some of these ideas or um, tips that we share today can, you guys can utilize it the next time you're feeling anxious or having some kind of an anxiety disorder or attack. Um, and also those 10 great tips on, on, uh, on fear. And we, and we want to focus on, on, on this podcast, on our podcast, encouraging ways of overcoming like some of these struggles, you know, natural things that we all go through fear we all have fear fear of failing fear of not being good enough for your partner not being good enough for your work or your job we all have those we have and just um everyday things everyday things that i mean it affects like 14 million of us here in the united states alone so that's a real thing and then we can hopefully this uh we hope that this podcast has been able to shed a little bit of light on that and what we've been talking about today. You guys have anything else you guys want to say or mention? Wrap up on this uh this episode. Um I, I do want to add uh one thing that helps me with anxiety when 
if I'm doing these other things and something is persisting, there's some additional things that I can do that are controllables that can help reduce that stress or anxiety. Um, and I kind of follow, we've talked about this before, but, uh, and it seems like it's too easy, but it, it really, really does work. And it's recommended by, um, the, the, you know, the PhD, um, Dr. Andrew Huberman, who studied at Stanford and he gives us the do's and don'ts of overcoming anxiety. And so the don'ts that add to anxiety is uh, consumption of porn Overconsumption of alcohol, weed, or other um, other drugs that numb you, your ability to feel. Um, so those things that numb you, um, obsessive playing of video games, um, all those types of things can add to anxiety. Um, the do's that he rec recommends, the controllables that we have are um, hydration, moderate caffeine, 15 minutes of direct sunlight or 30 minutes in cloudy days. He said that's the non-negotiable for him. If he can't do anything else, that's what he's doing is the direct sunlight. It's crazy how much uh, emphasis he puts on getting um, outside and getting access to direct sunlight with no sunglasses on, he says. Um, cold immersion, um, heat, uh, uh, heat therapy. So cold immersion can be cold showers. Um or full immersion in a cold plunge, heat, or the sauna, exercise, and then what you were talking about, meditation, the meditation side, clearing your mind, that can be done with breath work or yoga. So giving some people some physical tasks or activities there to avoid and to do, I think is extremely helpful as well. If you're finding yourself in a state of persistent anxiety or fear, are you doing these things um, in addition to seeing professional help as well? Um, and do make sure you're, you're doing these things. If you're not getting help from the other things and see how it improves. That's what's up. Jay like that. Yeah, that was good. I think one thing I like to do is, um, I like to, to role play it in my head. What, what, what's going to happen? What, what am I doing? And like, I try to picture what's going to go bad and what am I going to do to overcome? Like, if I trip up some, you know, doing something. And that's one thing that, that I usually do when I try to overcome my fears and anxiety, just play it out through my head. What's going to, what am I going to do? Which is probably what, like step number nine, visualize your goals. Just go yeah, through it step by step. Interesting how it was all tying in <laughs> into those steps right there. You know, those, those, yeah, those steps were all kind of tying into all these topics um, that, that can help us. And I guess the, the over, um, the, the, the big message that we want to send out is you're not alone if you feel this way. It, it, and again, it's, it, this is why I, we opened with, with trying to normalize this, that these are feelings that, that are normal. Right, that other people feel normal. People don't post about this as much on social media, probably, or talk about it. But just know that you're not alone, and there's ways past it. And you know, it's it's part of nature's way of telling us to change our situation or to improve, um, or to do some of those steps that we recommended. Uh, maybe you need more sunlight in your life. Maybe you need more exercise in your life. <laughs> maybe you need to challenge yourself more. You know, ask yourself these questions. I'm gonna ask you, you guys, these questions. Like when I put this topic out in the uh, in our group chat, did any of you guys get any anxiety or any fear of talking about this subject that we're going to talk about today? Or like some hesitation? I know I was. I the hesitation for sure. I was like, yeah. ah, that's word. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, same. I was a little but hesitant. That, that's what made my that's what made my brain go off though because i'm trying to train myself to notice when i do this and then revisit it and sit in it you know like it was recommending and i think step three or four there and sit in it why am i why am i trying to avoid this <laughs> yeah yeah same same here I was, I had anxiety and fear because one, I didn't want to talk about myself or put myself out there into a public forum where I'm going to talk about some of my personal experience. I mean, we're a podcast and we're, 
you know, I don't know. It's it's tough for me to do that to get that's not in my comfort zone. But and plus this topic isn't rarely talked about in different podcasts. So or mentioned out there that much. Anxiety and, and fear. It's not it's not talked about. And being it's uncomfortable. Yeah, super uncomfortable. And I'm glad that you guys are here to go through this pain with me and not well, you know, this this uh, topic with me and, and to unfold it and talk about it and share our thoughts ab- about it because someone out there is going to hear this and it's going to help them. And so ho- hopefully right. we can encourage and keep encouraging these, these hard topics that were, were, were t- difficult to talk about and we encourage others to, to handle. But yeah, man, I think, I think this was a great episode, great podcast. And I think it'll be beneficial for someone out there. If, it, if not, Anybody out there listening, I know it was beneficial for us three personally because we were able to tackle this, man. So that's what's up. Props to you guys. And if any of you listeners out there that's having trouble with fears and anxiety, you know, and need somebody to talk to, you could always hit us up in our DMs or email or whatever. Get in contact with us. We'll be glad to talk to you guys about anything that you guys are going through. Absolutely. Yeah, reach out to um, com or... All our social medias, Twitter, Wild Wild West on Twitter. Man, Twitter's crazy right now. You guys have been on Twitter? I feel anxiety on when I'm on Twitter just to make a comment about something now. <laughs> I don't trust myself on there. Ugh, that's a weird platform <laughs> now, man. Anyhow, I'm off. Yeah, true, true, true free speech is, is ugly. It's an uncomfortable truth, right? Because people are going to be all over the place. If you really are going to protect free speech, you're going to protect some things that you don't want to hear. And um, so that, that, you know, that's an, an uncomfortable truth in and of itself. Right. But I think that's, you know, that's one thing um, addressing concern, addressing issues and things on people's minds that are common, that are uncomfortable, that make us feel discomfort. These are things that we should be addressing. Jeez, yeah. Be safe on Twitter, people. Be safe. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you guys have anything else you want to share for anxiety and fear on, while we're on this topic? No, I just think if 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 this podcast added any value, the the, the way you can reciprocate is by uh, you know following us, um, subscribing to our YouTube channel, um, the Encouragers. Um, on YouTube, you can just, it, it's just uh, the encouragers now, right? Notice? Yeah, at the encouragers. Yep. And um, on social media, you probably know us as well. But if you guys go, you know, it doesn't cost you anything to like. It doesn't, you just got to lift up a finger. And I know you may be hesitant to do it, but it really helps us out. So if we, if we have been adding any sort of value to your, to your life, that would help us by adding your subscription and sharing it with your friends and liking our content. 100%. Shout out to our sponsors, Ofa and Good Vibes Kava, uh, OfaFootball.org, Good Vibes Kava, and what else? Uh, oh, um, the Card House Troop Texas. 28. Troop 28 Clothing. Shout out to Troop 28 Clothing and Tex uh, Business. And thanks all for listening to this episode. And we hope we added some value to you this week. You guys have a great week. And we'll see you in the next one. See you guys.